thank you for joining to WiseNet session part two. In this session, we will be speaking about our NBR. In the previous session, which some of you had attended, was part one that talked about selecting cameras and what are the different camera series that we have and how to choose between them. Okay, now. In this session, we are going to see how to choose an NVR once you have selected a, a cameras for your project. All right. Now, uh, in WiseNet, the NVRs are divided into different series. Just like cameras, we have L series, Q series, X series, P series, NVR. We will be seeing the differences today and why would you need to go for a specific NVR series. Now, for those who are not very familiar about the concept of NVR, the NVR fits in exactly at, uh, let's pull this out. Here we go. So the location for NVR in a CCTV project is here. The cameras, cameras are connected to the NVR or on the switch, the NVR is supposed to do or manage all the cameras, supposed to manage the recording and so on. Then you have client PC to monitor the cameras from the NVR. Uh, behind the NVR, there are monitor outputs, HDMI output. You can also directly connect a monitor behind the NVR also. Okay. All right. So. Uh, In our NVR, the reason why customers would go for an NVR solution, NVR is a purpose-built hardware, which means uh, we are manufacturing the NVR only for recording purpose. You cannot reformat the NVR server or NVR PC, which looks like this. You cannot reformat it and repurpose for some other use. It is a purpose-built hardware with pre-installed video management application that is running that is uh, you can call it as a plug and play because as soon as you plug in the NVR you have to set up the IP address add the cameras and start recording so uh, the hardware in the NVR is also purpose built uh, the NVR comes in different uh, segment for example you can buy a four channel NVR and you can also buy 8 channel NVR, you can buy 1632. Depending on the number of cameras you have, you can buy an NVR model. Now, uh, if you buy a 4 channel NVR, you it is built only for 4 channels. You cannot make it 5 channel. If you have 5 cameras, you should buy either 8 channel or 2 times 4 channel NVR. All right. So this is uh, already benchmarked hardware. Uh, the number of hard disk inside, everything is already pre, uh, you can say pre-designed, the RAM card, everything has been tested, uh, all the software is pre-installed and so on. No license is required, no Windows operating system running, so no Windows license required, no antivirus updates and so on. So, uh, however, having said that, it is completely uh, feature rich, for example, uh, in a typical NVR, this is the backside view of an NVR. You have uh, monitor outputs to connect your monitor, HDMI monitor, VGA monitor. You can directly monitor the cameras. Why would you need a monitor output? Because you can have six, 36 cameras you can see in one screen. Or if we have 64 cameras, you can see in one screen and so on. Then and uh, network ports you have multiple network ports you can have one port dedicated for cameras another port for your uh, operators for the monitoring maybe you have a control room pc you can monitor through the control room pc that can be done you have double fans redundant fans so in case one of the fan is out the second fan can still continue to cool the unit then redundant power supplies, basically one of the power supply fails, the other power supply takes over. Not only that, the NVR has also come with uh, RAID functionality, redundancy, RAID 5, RAID 6, and uh, they have failover option. Failover means if you have multiple NVRs, 
one of the NVR can fail. In this picture, you can see there are three NVRs. Second NVR has failed. It's fine. Whatever the ca whatever cameras were recording on the second NVR will now start recording on the third one. Okay, so what is the third one? Third one is a standby NVR. So if you have a project with 10 NVRs, you can buy one standby NVR. And in the case, any one of the NVR fails, one of the 10, it will start recording on the standby. If the standby fails, of course, there's nothing can be done. So standby is supposed to be up and running. So how it works is also very simple. You don't have to buy any expensive software, do any expensive configuration or tedious configuration, nothing like that. It's just a few clicks. You go to the standard NVR, you have 10 NVRs, right? You go to each of the 10 NVR and you enter the IP address of the standby NVR. That's it. Then on the standby NVR, you select it, you select the mode and say you are a standby. That's it, nothing else. So now the standby NVR will start monitoring all the 10 NVRs. Anything goes wrong with the 10, any one of the 10 NVR, it will start recording those traffic. Now you can have standby NVR for every uh, up to 32. That means you can have one, two, three, four, up to 32 NVRs and one as a standby. N plus one failover is supported. All right. Now, do we say go ahead and put 32? Actually, for a best security practice, you can use 8 is to 1, 10 is to 1, 12 is to 1. Whatever ratio is more sensible, you can use that ratio. NVR has a feature called ARB, Automatic Recovery Backup. If ever the camera is recording on the SD card, camera is recording on the SD card and there is a network connection loss, the camera will continue to record because it will be powered by an external power supply. And once the connection is restored, the SD card data will be pushed back to the, or you can search for the SD card data back from the NVR during that gap. All right, so this is called automatic recovery backup. So roughly speaking, features that you typically require from a recorder right it's all available in an nvr then what's the catch the catch is today we have nvrs up to six, 64 channel so if you have more than 64 channel you should buy one or two nvrs if you have 500 cameras 500 you have to divide 500 by 8 to get 500 by 64 and you probably will have five six nvrs or eight nvrs you will have right so something like that the maximum number of channels in the nvr today is 64 we have other NVR models uh, that is based on Windows. It looks, they are like servers with uh, 128 cameras, 300 cameras, and we are releasing new, newer models with higher number of cameras per server. But that uh, is not for today's topic. That's part three where we talk about VMS, right? So today we are only speaking about NVR, small to medium scale projects where the customer requires everything from a vendor and in the most affordable manner all right so the the uh, nvrs are uh, although it is only 64 channel they are very affordable if you take if you buy a server for 64 channel it will be roughly three times the price Right. So that is why NVR is still popular. Also, let's say you have a project with only 10 cameras. In that case, you cannot go and buy a server and buy Windows license and so on. Just for paying for the Windows license itself, you can buy an NVR for that cost for maybe um, $200, $300. You can buy a channel NVR. So we have NVRs with PoE port behind the NVR itself where you can directly plug the camera. You have IP camera, you can directly plug the IP camera behind the NVR. You don't have to buy a separate PoE switch. These NVRs, they end with the model number S to indicate that it has got a PoE switch. So uh, the objective of NVR is to solve the VMS requirement in the most cost-effective manner, all right? And it is running on a Linux operating system. Now, just because it is running in Linux, there's no concern because uh, 
right now I'm going to log into the NVR web page. So this is the live web page of the NVR and I am using a, a Windows PC. So you can use a Windows PC to operate and manage the NVR. All right. So the NVR itself is Linux, but the web interface is all Windows supported. Okay, so once you connect your camera, how do you go ahead and add? Go to setup. Go to, first, you go to the web page of the NVR, go to setup, click on auto detect. It will automatically detect all the cameras in your project. Select the cameras that you want to add. And give enter the password of the cameras that you want to add. Test connection. Then click OK. OK, this one is not powered on. OK, no issue. Done. Then click OK. Done. So that's it. So now you have added your cameras to the NVR. In the NVR, there are slots for hard disk. You see these hard disk slots. You can insert the hard disk in the NVR. And once you insert, you can go to the device storage device device itself you will see all the hard disk listed here i believe you can see clearly all the hard disk are listed here by um, once you add the camera automatically it starts recording in all the hard disk then you can go ahead and adjust that you can uh, say you've registered the camera you can go to the profile and you can say what uh, profile to record currently it is recording h264 so you can say, uh, I want to record H265 for all the cameras and it will record in a better codec for lesser storage. So that can be done. You can customize that. So this is called profile setup. Live view, live view, it will use H264 for recording. It will use H265. Then remote view. Remote view is if you're viewing over the internet, if you're viewing on a central connection, maybe a VMS, uh, for example, you have NVRs in different cities, different branch office, and you want to bring it centrally to one location. In that case, you can control from the NVR what resolution to send. Maybe you have a bandwidth issue. In that case, you can send a lower resolution. If you, if you don't have a bandwidth issue, then you can send higher resolution. All right, I'll give you an example where you don't have bandwidth issue. Imagine a project, you have five NVRs, and you want to see all the NVR together centrally in a VMS. In that case, your uh, five NVR is in the same site. It's let's say hotel and the control room is in the hotel. So you have a local network. In that case, there's no bandwidth issue, right? So that time you can tell the NVR, I don't have a bandwidth issue. I want to see all of them centrally from a VMS and show me full resolution. So you can say H264, the NVR will send full resolution. Now we will uh, we will see about how to view centrally everything later on towards the end of the training. Right now, I want you to get an idea about what are the features available with the NVR. After that, we will go and see what are the different NVR models, which model has which feature, which model does not have a certain feature. And in the end, we will see how to centrally manage all the NVR together. I noticed some of you are coming from different region uh, with your attending. So uh, if that VMS, uh, we use SSM VMS. If you're not using SSM VMS, get in touch with the Han representative. Uh, but from what I know globally, which is Asia and uh, uh, some part of Asia and uh, Korea and the Middle East, Africa, we are using SSM VMS. This is, we have another VMS called Wave VMS, but um, on an enterprise scale, medium scale, we always use SSM in our region. All right, now uh, back to the topic, what are the features available? Uh, on the NVR itself, if you want to quickly see all the cameras on the web page, you can go to the live tab and see them. We have a search tab where you can search for the recorded data. You can search uh, for multiple cameras together and play back the video. After you play back, you can export the video. That is possible. And uh, here we go. Next is setup. 
setup is where we added the camera you can add a hanwa camera or you can add an on wave camera which is third party cameras you can even add a non on wave camera and non open protocol camera using rtsp that can be done all right now when you're adding the camera you can uh, use select basically which all cameras you want to add you don't have to choose the numbers channel numbers it will automatically be assigned by the nvr okay once you add you can check in the preview button which cameras you have added okay channel setup channel setup is whether you uh, some sometimes some customers uh, they want to do covert monitoring which means uh, the camera will be recording in the background but you cannot see the live video so it's called covert covert 2 means uh, the operator cannot do live view or playback but it is a recording in the nvr only with the admin can go ahead and get access to those cameras that can be done then uh, audio if you want to do audio recording you can uh, basically enable audio for that channel next is camera names you can give camera names abc and so on for each camera in the nvr next camera setup each camera which we added each camera has got multiple profiles h264 h265 resolution with a specific resolution and frame rate now um, currently i am planning to record the h265 from camera one all right see here channel one what is channel one ip address 1.160 okay 192 168 or 1.160 it's basically an x series camera a bullet camera looking at the door so it has got multiple profiles h264 h265 and so on so basically without going to the camera web page i am going to control that settings from the nvr all right so this is the list of profiles which is in the camera web page but i don't have to go to the camera web page once i add the camera i can directly control the camera settings through the nvr the camera setting tells me the h265 is 2 megapixel 5 frames I can change it to let's say 20 frames click OK and then you can click refresh even in the web page you can find the H265 will be updated to 20 frames so you can push the settings from the NVR to the cameras if you want you can create a new profile you can say I want to create a recording profile you can give it a project name your project name so you uh, make sure you tell everybody record the project name profile and uh, let's say uh, uh, project name Ryan Towers let's say this is recording record profile Oops. I should have changed it to H265. I put uh, H264. So this one. Basically, when I create again, you drop down and you select H265. H265 is better. Okay, so you can create, you can change the settings and so on. You can up, uh, then apply it. That can be done. All right. Then. If you want to turn on the WDR of the camera, if you want to make some changes to the cameras, you can also do it through the NVR itself without going to the camera settings. For example, here backlight, I can turn on the WDR for the camera can be done through the NVR, right? Now, whatever settings I am doing, you can do it by directly connecting um, the monitor behind the NVR. Maybe you don't have a uh, a computer you don't have a, a network switch or you don't have a cat6 cable but that's once you have done your nvr so you can directly connect a monitor behind the nvr if you remember you seen the hdmi port you can directly connect and do the same thing what we did what we are doing now you can do the live view just like what we're doing now all right so right now why i'm showing this is because over the internet this is the best way to demonstrate the features to you 
Next, you can update all the camera passwords through the NVR, can be done. Then recording schedule, you can, uh, each camera you can customize the recording schedule. So if some cameras should record continuously uh, during daytime, you can say during working hours record continuously and the remaining hours you can record based on motion. You can apply each setting to set each channel separately. Some cameras only motion recording, right? If you want to apply the same setting to all, you can select all and click OK. It will get saved. Next, records uh, setup. Setup is in the NVR, what you want to record. Do you want to record uh, standard recording or, sorry, if, you want, if you're doing a standard recording, what uh, profile should be recorded from the camera or what uh, frame rate should be recorded from the camera. If there is an event, should the NVR record? And if it is going to record, what frame rate should it record? All right, slightly a uh, bit confusing, but let me uh, explain as we move forward. Let's say, um, let's say I want my NVR to record only based on event, only based on event motion or anything like that in that case i can switch off normal recording so even if you say i want to record continuously it will not record because if according to the nvr recording setup continuous recording i have switched it off right some channels if you want you can turn it on you can say all right this camera let it record continuously so there are two places where you change first you put a schedule what time it should record continuously and uh, during that continuous time do you want to record at full frame rate or only the main key frames iframe or you want to disable recording completely for this camera you can do that then motion recording right if you don't want motion recording you can switch it off or if you want motion recording, you can turn it on and you can say, I need to do motion recording, full frame rate. Okay, next, before motion occurred, you can set up the time after motion record or after motion, how long should it record? See, uh, whenever there's a tamper, whenever there's a motion, you want to know how it occurred not after it occurred. So that's why you have a pre-recording. Even before someone caused a damage to the camera, even before someone entered the camera scene, it will have a five second pre-recording. And after the incident happened, it will have a post recording for 30 seconds. All right, so this is pre and post recording. Then you can turn on recording on or off. Previously, we enabled audio channel to hear audio and so on. Now here you can enable audio to receive and start recording. If you want, you can record audio from the cameras. Next is each camera, how many days you want to keep the recording. You can edit um, here. You can say some cameras I want to record 31 days, The some other cameras I want to record for 90 days. So you can customize this uh, for each channel. Many brands, they have struggled with this setting. They can do for their all the camera together, but not, I mean, they cannot just change for specific cameras, right? Maybe you have a camera and the ATM then in the ATM there is a regulation in Dubai that you have to record for 90 days. Now, just because you have one camera in the ATM does not mean you have to give another another new NVR. The same NVR you can control and say, record 30 days except that one camera record for 90 days. So it will save a lot of cost, right? And imagine the project require RAID 5 redundancy failover. That means you need for that one separate ATM camera, you need failover again. You need to buy one more failover NVR. So your project cost can go higher. So these are small features which can uh, help in efficient design, basically, uh, and also a flexible design, right? Not rigid. Then comes your uh, events. NVR is uh, capable of receiving multiple events. Okay, here we go. First event. There are three levels. OK, 
okay three levels you can say um, the nvr itself behind the nvr there are alarm inputs now i'm going to show that in this picture here you can see the green color terminal block behind the nvr there are alarm inputs okay you can receive fire alarm input you can receive any cabinet someone opens the cabinet someone enter the security control room or data center you can connect an input to the nvr for a pop-up a start recording or you can create any other event email or so on okay so there are multiple alarm inputs behind the nvr okay next All right. So here you can um, you can also customize. For example, uh, let's say the, there is also outputs behind the NVR. There were alarm inputs. We saw there is also alarm output. Sometimes some customers they want to monitor the CCTV status on a third-party system. Example, BMS system or a, a, any other network system or it could be anything. Uh, mostly BMS system we have customers asking us I want to see it in a BMS but they are only interested in basic event not the entire motion and uh, not not every single event that the camera has to send they are only interested in very basic event such as is the camera online is everything okay or is the NVR at fault or is the camera at fault so based on that if an incident happened maybe it could be hardest failure or it could be fan error or you can add something like create a rule you can say uh, video loss video loss let's say if any of the camera goes uh, loses video you can trigger an action you can say trigger relay contact 4 from the nvr so whenever a relay contact 4 from the NVR is triggered, you will know that, okay, that uh, there is some issue with the NVR or uh, there is a video loss in the NVR or whenever there is a hard disk issue, you can trigger relay number three. So you can map it. Okay. So this is one of the basic method. We also have SNMP integration with, uh, uh, if you have a network management tool, you can use SNMP to monitor the status. Uh, that can be done. We also can do software level integration. So depending on the project, but most of them just need a basic integration. So it can be done. All right. Okay. Next. Then alarm input camera. First we saw alarm input NVR. In the NVR there is alarm input okay now cameras camera also has got alarm input all right how is that if you go to the camera right now i switched my web page to a camera as you can see this is a web page of the camera even the camera has got alarm inputs and outputs event alarm input it has one alarm input each camera will have at least one alarm input one alarm output majority of them will have it okay so you can also trigger if a camera is receiving alarm input sorry not this i trigger alarm input camera if camera 2 received alarm input then i need action um, you can you can trigger another alarm output or uh, you can uh, pre ptz ptz preset push monitor event pop up and so on that can be done okay so that is one next is uh, software events okay software events again it's in the same page click add create a rule click add trigger 
motion detection motion detection is not a hardware alarm it's a software alarm camera through the software detected motion iva iva is also intelligent video analytics someone crossed the line someone enter a zone okay, fog detection these are all software alarms even the software alarms you can receive from the camera if the camera has got that alarm it will automatically be available in the nvr and you can trigger an action based on that you can group multiple events you can say if motion and tampered occurred and then you can uh, create a rule name and create an action so that can be done all right so quite flexible when it comes to managing the system all right then uh, we will see the ai engine we will see later on uh, alarm input we already saw on web setup uh, not very important and uh, schedule so usually we are you can create a schedule names you can say school working hour schedule you can create a schedule and choose that so during working hours all the alarms and events will occur during non working hours all the alarms and events will be silent mode will be muted all right so you got that same way if you want to record only on the holidays you can create a schedule so something like that so that is the purpose of scheduling next is storage device every nvr has got at least one hard disk support some of them will have higher hard disk higher the number of camera higher the hard disk support right for one camera we don't need eight slots but for eight cameras maybe you need two slots three slots so we have nvr models um in a, in a, in a uh in a specific you know uh, mode such as uh, eight hard disk 16 hard disk 12 hard disk depending on the project you can choose because the higher the hard disk bigger the nvr bigger the nvr more the uh, cost in terms of power supplies coolings and more uh, rack unit required and so on right everything changes so we have different models catering to different requirements just like a camera you have a very small camera you have a bigger camera you have a ptz camera same like that nvrs also have different options can we create a schedule for each device connected to the nvr yeah so let's say if you want to record you want to record for a specific um if is it for recording can you create a schedule for each device connected to the nvr okay if it is for recording for each channel you can customize when it should record continuously event and so on then here yeah for each channel you can do storage device all right storage device this particular nbr has got 16 slots right so as you put in the hard disk it will start numbering here as 16 up to 16 okay then uh, status normal looks good type internal hard disk built in hard disk what is the size <coughs> is the hard disk um condition okay is it going to start degrading so you can see all the status here we also support smart diagnostics if your hard disk supports smart diagnostics you can check uh, basically more details about each hard disk right so if each hard disk you can check what is the current parameters if everything is good and so hard disk uh, nvr also supports iSCSI not all of them some of them have iSCSI storage option you can expand maybe your nvr has only four hard disk you need to record for another 30 days so you can uh, map to an iSCSI storage you can add in the nvr web page you can add the storage location and the Uh, and then start recording i mean then you can expand your storage for additional number of days then some nvrs not all have raid option what is raid option raid 5 raid 6 it's basically redundancy in hard disk 
for example, this one has a rate 5. You can say use rate 5, rate 6. If you use rate 6, you can lose to hard disk, but still recover the lost data. If you use rate 5, you, you can lose one hard disk. You can replace it. Or the lost recording data will be recovered. All right, so that is the rate principle. You can attend a separate training on what is the meaning of rate. But this is the idea that redundancy in the hard disk, you don't lose recording. If you lost your hard disk today in your laptop, for sure you lost hard disk for that, right? Whatever data is there, you lost, unless you had a backup, okay? Same way, in the NVR, if a one hard disk failed, uh, simply put, whatever data is in that hard disk will be lost. So in order to have some redundancy, you can create a RAID configuration for a group of uh, hard disk. So let's say for every six hard disks, I create a RAID. So within that six hard disk, if any one fails and I replace it, automatically I still recover all the lost data, right? There is a catch because uh, of course it will take more storage. You would know that RAID 5, RAID 6, 25 to 30% more storage is required. If you want to, if you need only 10 terabyte, you have to supply at least 12 to 13 terabyte. If you need 20 terabyte, you need another another 5 to 6 terabyte just to just for RAID parity. All right, so RAID has its plus and minus, but it is good nowadays. We see it as a common requirement in many project. At least RAID 5, they are asking for it. Okay, we can create two arrays. Every NVR, there are two arrays, not one array. If your NVR has only eight hard disk, we still have two array. Every four hard disk, we can create one RAID group. If your NVR has got 16 hard disk slot, every eight hard disk, you can create one RAID group, all right? So we can manage, basically there is a hardware RAID controller in the NVR and it can manage two RAID groups. But one good thing here is, you just have to click use and set up and that's it you didn't have to download a raid application raid setup and anything else so this is the benefit of nvr right with very little experience or about a server you are just going through the web page click click next and so on you are able to set up a recording solution all right whereas in a windows based you have to make sure the windows uh, updates are okay whether the system is compatible whether the processor is correct whether the ram is correct and whether the raid controller is okay and so many other things you have to do your from your side you have to check okay so that's one of the things with the nvr why it is still very popular you don't need to spend uh, a lot of time setting up the server because it is already pre-configured okay then if you uh, every nvr uh, in order to configure raid a minimum number of hard disks is required so here if you notice i have seven hard disk oh sorry one two three four six hard disk because i have six i can create raid some of them you need minimum five some of them minimum six uh, for raid six you need minimum six so it depends on the nvr that our toolbox will help you but if you have less than the minimum so this is an older NVR. I switched to a different interface now. Uh, let's say I am going to uh, the different NVR, camera, NVR, uh, device, rate. Here, I have just one hard disk and I'm going to configure rate. If I say use, it will say insufficient hard disk. Do you see that insufficient internal hard disk to build a RAID? So there is a minimum number of hard disk. Many of them make mistake here. Please keep this in mind. Although you need only two terabyte, if you want RAID 5, you still have to put at least uh, four or five hard disk. Even though you need half terabyte, if you want RAID 5, there is a condition. Minimum, you have to put certain number of hard disk. All right, just because you need only half terabyte does not mean one hard disk is enough and you can create a RAID 5. It does not work, it not in our NVR, not in any NVR, it is not possible. There is a minimum criteria that is required to create a RAID. All right, so keep this in mind. Many of you may miss it or your pre-sales may have missed it. Just if there is a RAID, make sure you have enough hard disk because someone has to pay at the end of the day to configure the, uh, comply to the requirement, meet the criteria 
and hard disk is not cheap. Okay. This one also we can uh, skip for now. You can always, uh, once you get, this is usually for a con, 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 what do you say? Configuration engineers, technical engineers, and they are, when you're configuring the project, how to, there are some tricks and tips on how to increase the bandwidth of the NVR to have more higher, I mean, uh, to have more number of cameras and so on. So all this we can see at a later stage. Right now it's not required. Next is uh, monitor text. Um, NVR can receive ASCII data from point of sale system uh, or your ATM transactions we can receive those text data and put it on the screen you have video and on the video on the right side you can see the transaction uh, typed in right so we can receive text data and uh, link it with a video so whenever you look for a specific transaction id automatically that video will pop up all right so you can link uh, for example you can channel is assigned okay can say this is camera one which uh, type of data will come in different systems will have different uh, encoding type for the data so you, we have different formats and uh, maybe you can see this WinCore is a ATM machine NPR Epson printers so it, we can receive those text data every transaction starts with the initial code right like if you do c plus programming you start with the programming start code and you end with a certain code so same way every transaction starts and ends with a certain code you just enter the code here so it knows that okay um, for uh, when the transaction happened it will link to a new video so it will uh, it will consider it as one event a separate event so when the transaction when the code ends it will consider as that even closed so it's like this right when you insert this atm card transaction start then once you remove it transaction end so you can put that code here whatever that machine is following then that particular event will be mapped in the nvr so roughly speaking many banks are using this pro feature um, on demand basis get in touch with our team and they can help you uh, even the event if you notice some text data such as five thousand dollars is coming up you can get a pop-up or a notification okay there is a high higher amount of transaction being processed so you can uh, you can also take a note automatically okay next is uh, the nvr has got multiple network ports some of them have one two some of them have three and four but just simply put, camera port means universal port. All the live traffic, all the client traffic, monitoring this web page. See, I am browsing through 1.22. My IP address is 1.22. I can do live view, playback, control, change, setting, everything I can do through the first port. Second port um, is for viewing only. Through this port, cameras will not be recording. Cam only the clients can see this port. You know, sometimes in the bank, you have two different networks. For the operators, you have a separate viewing network, security network, and for the cameras, you have a separate network. Maybe the devices, back-end devices, you have separate network. You can split the network, okay, it can be done. Okay, then other security settings, such as uh, you can customize the ports, and uh, DDNS, we have our own DDNS server, ddns.hanwatsaysecurity.com you can create a free ddns id uh, and you can use it to connect your mobile phone for viewing the cameras remotely and so on next is uh, ip filtering if you want to only allow certain or deny certain ip you can do that https security protocol is supported you can install your own access control certificate Maybe uh, only certified devices can access that particular network. You can do this, 802.1. Then NVR can give IP address to cameras, DHCP server. Can do that, but mostly we don't, we keep it off 
because if you connect any device automatically nvr will give an ip address just like your router your wi-fi router it give you connect it you get an ip address same way okay then it supports p2p uh, p2p how to understand is a uh, one slide on p2p let me pull that up so here we go if you're connecting using your mobile phone uh, there is a p2p code which you can scan from your phone and you will it will automatically register that particular nvr you don't have to type in all the details right quick add quick add and it routes the traffic through the internet for you to view over your mobile phone okay so p2p you can disable it some people don't want it so you can disable okay next is uh, system date time okay nvr can act as a time server if you have a new camera in your project all the cameras can take copy the same time as nvr this is one way to make sure all of the devices in your project have the same time so it's called activate as server nvr can act as a time server so whatever time the nvr has all the cameras will copy the same time okay nvr itself can copy time from another uh, maybe you have another time server maybe for your project you have a master clock system or you have a gps clock or you have a pc or something connected to a gps to have uh, or, uh, accurate timing from the satellite or through the internet you can sync to an external server also the cameras may not be on the internet but maybe the nvr is on the internet so you can link the nvr to download or copy the time from the internet and the nvr will copy the time to all the cameras so this is optional it is also available okay so these are the points which you typically see in specifications right live view multiplex live view you can uh, manual record manual record means maybe while you are monitoring there is an incident someone is walking in and the and the schedule is not, not record there is no scheduling done maybe uh, the camera is in the uh, in the schedule where it's not supposed to record so but you can override it by clicking on manual record so you force the camera to start recording it's called manual record then from the web page you can export the videos you can export multiple cameras together and uh, let's see some more settings okay let me choose the channels put the starting time end time and export the video okay all right next is users let's see the You can create multiple users for the NVR. Some user can have access to certain cameras, playback certain cameras. Uh, first, you create a group. You say, I want to create an operator group. And then what all cameras he should be able to playback or record or so on. So let's say live view, operator group, which cameras he can take a backup which camera whether he can access this particular menu you can disable that okay all right so then lastly you can update the nvr you can update the nvr settings you can copy the settings and so on and then logs if nvr is receiving the log a motion recording how do you know if the camera or nvr is receiving the motion you can check that we have specific log called event log you can specifically check for motion detection from all cameras today and search so or you can search for a couple of days 
okay so that can be done also what is your scam 7 type let me check here cam 7 is a standard dome camera on the ceiling just looking at the training room Okay, so how to reset? Okay, so be, behind the NVR, there is a small reset button. Uh, we usually cover it during the configuration training. So there is an option to do that. If you have forgotten the password, just like a camera, there is a reset button, but it is not labeled. It's, uh, it is an unlabeled button. So you have to hold it for a few seconds and then the main admin password will be reset but the recording will be kept safe. Only the main admin password will be reset. Okay, then uh, here we go. Okay, now we have to understand about the different NVR series. And uh, first I will just do an introduction and then we can take a break. Every NVR starts with three letters and the two letters will be same R and N recorder NVR recorder NVR first letter can change L Q P X so on and the rest of them not a big deal the toolbox will help you to do the selection what you have to understand is some NVRs have D D means dual power supply two power supplies if you don't have D single power supply b means hard disk bay four represents 16 hard disks okay that is one uh, there are older models which follow different model numbering again the toolbox will help you to understand the difference between them how many hard disks is there and so on okay then um, the series the first two series l and q they are very simple up to 16 cameras 4 8 16 4 8 16 maximum 16 cameras only all right they are ideally suited for small projects retail projects office buildings maybe residential certain residential buildings with a fewer number of cameras or maybe a retail shop uh, maybe it's a jewelry shop or it could be anything um, critical or less critical see none of the nvrs have lesser security than the other one it's all about the uh, number of cameras and whether you want RAID and without RAID failover, all right? So uh, L and Q series is having up to 16 cameras. So what's the difference between L and Q? L is supposed to be a light in terms of cost. Uh, it supports one HDMI output and each camera you cannot exceed five megapixels each camera not the total camera if you have 16 channel each 16 can be 5 mega 5 mega 5 mega uh, 5 mega and so on each if you have four camera each can be 5 mega all right so this is the l series it supports 16 cameras 16 channel model each camera you can go up to 5 q series it supports 16 channels each camera you can go up to 8 mega which is 4k all right and then uh, it supports two monitor output behind it so very small difference generally if you are not sure just start with q or uh, or x all right and most of the projects we will need only x series nvr so we will uh, cover that after a break and uh, will be uh, i'll put the break timer for 10 minutes
Okay, let's continue. So what did we learn so far? We talked about NVR features. NVR is a, you can say it's a proprietary device for each vendor. You can use the NVR to quickly add camera, manage camera, view cameras, playback, export, rate 5, rate 6, failover, right? And uh, you can manage the recording schedules, alarm inputs, events. So for a group of cameras, you can do. <clears throat> and the group of camera can be as small as four channel can be as big as 64 channel. If you have a higher than 64 channel, you will need multiple NVRs, right? You will need multiple NVRs and form it as, make it as a group. Okay, all right. Now we were talking about how to choose between the series. If you have a very small project, up to 16 camera, look at L or Q series. And if you're using basic cameras, you can go ahead and use even L for NVR, Q for Q series NVR. Okay, now in both the NVRs and how to choose between them, uh, there are two places for you to look at. First one is of course the catalog. Okay, so we will just quickly go through the catalogs and get to know what information is available. Directly type, okay, go, go down to model number here naming rule just like camera we have nvr naming rule you can type here qrn okay all the qrn models are listed here it says here 16 channel linux platform you can still add it through a windows client operating uh, for monitoring okay so that's fine recording maximum recording bitrate 128 mbps this data is not important for you now because uh, the toolbox will do this calculation for you all you have to know is what information is available in this particular page how many hard disks two hard disk okay it supports input output and so on event action supports two monitors uh, most of them actually support two monitors and poe budget what is why poe budget this one has a s s at the end s means it is a poe nvr you can directly plug the camera behind the nvr you don't need to buy a switch you don't have to buy a hp switch cisco switch links switch tp links we don't have to buy that directly plug the camera behind the nvr and it can power up to 130 watts how do you know whether the power is good enough if you um, if you scroll to any camera, any camera at the bottom, this is a lens, okay, this camera, this one is a heavy camera, let's see. Okay, we'll just take an example. All of these cameras, you can see it takes PoE 22 watts because it's a four channel camera, so that's why it takes more power. Uh, you have, this is a PTZ camera, multi-sensor, okay, not the right camera to check at the moment. You can go to a basic camera, let's say a normal dome camera or a bullet camera. So these are all standard cameras. They take roughly uh, even up to 12.95 watt for an outdoor model, all right? Indoor model will be slightly lesser. These are IP67 because it requires heater. In the nighttime sometimes heater is on, so can go up to 12.95. So the PoE budget will tell you exactly how many cameras you can connect. So the budget is 130 watt QRN. Where's the budget? This one does not have because there's no S. Go to the next one. Okay, this one has 130. 130 and divided by 10. 130 divided by 12, let's say you can connect 10 cameras, but it's a eight channel camera. So you can connect up, sorry, 16 channel NVR. So you can only connect 10 cameras. If your PoE camera sub takes only six watts, there are models with six watt indoor models, some with four watts, uh, some with nine watts. So depending on the model, you can connect the number of cameras. So this one you have to check, okay? Then hard disk. 
uh, hard disk is not supplied by us. Some of times the distributor is also including the hard disk. Uh, some regions we are supplying the hard disk. Even in uh, this region we are looking at that option. But at the moment we have a flexibility. You can choose any hard disk from the compatibility list. Go to data center from our website, which is our website, hanwa-security.com with the dash in between. Go to the HDD compatibility. Look down, view. So we have Western Digital and Seagate models listed and it is updated every month. Whenever the brand, uh, vendors are updating the hard disk model, we also update. So type here QRN, let's say 1610. All right. When I type 1610, I, I can only see just one. If I click find, I cannot see more. Why? Because QRN 1610 is using the same concept as 1610 LRN. So if any hard disk works with LRN, it will also work with 1610. If any hard disk works with LRN 1610, works with XRN 810. Same here. If any hard disk works with PRN 6410, works with XRN 63210. So in this case, since it belongs to the group LRN 1610, I will take that, copy, F, click Control F and search. So here, tick box, hard disk model number, so and so, hard disk size, so and so. Keep going next, you will find different models under Western Digital. Keep going next, you will find more hard disk options. So this is how you select the hard disk for your end All right. So for small projects, it was straightforward, basic. And uh, how did we decide between Q and L? If you want mm, uh, more cost-effective option, you can start with L. Otherwise, you can go with Q. In Q. There is 8 channel, 4 channel, up to 16 channel. S means POE. Uh, 20 supports higher POE budget compared to 10. 20 will have slightly higher POE budget. Okay, and it has one hard disk. Some of them have two hard disk. Okay, so that's it. Now, how to decide? when to go with X. Roughly speaking, almost every project you can go with X. Why? X series starts also from 4 channel. X series also starts from 4 channel, 8 channel, again 8 channel, second version, up to 64 channel. So X is the most versatile series. You can find almost every model. So why would you go with X? Okay, um, most, most, I mean, generally, if you're, uh, let's say here, X series, 16 channel, it has higher POE budget. If you notice, the other one was 16 channel, 130 watt, X series has 220 watt. So more POE budget than hard disk. It supports more than two hard disk. The other one had L series and Q series, you'll find up to two slots. Here you'll find four slot, you'll find eight slots, higher number of hard disk option. So for a smaller project, if you have more hard disk requirement or if you need higher POE budget requirement, then you can look at X series. Then another reason for uh, X series is if you want failover, failover, N plus one failover, you see here, it will be listed here whereas in Q and uh, POE option is not available. Uh, sorry, failover option is not available in L and Q. So it's for entry level projects. So of course it's not available there. But X series, suppose it's the most versatile series. From 16 channel, you will find failover. From 16 channel, you will find N plus one failover option. What about uh, eight channel? Eight channel, you may you will not. Oh, it's, okay, so it was added. So eight channel also the new model is having failover. So X series you can get failover support, right? So that's something you can keep in mind. All right, what else you can get in X? X series is where you will start to have a RAID option. 
RAID 5, RAID 6, redundancy in hard disk. It is not available in L or Q. If you want RAID option, you need to go to X series. Okay, RAID 5, RAID 6, 32 channel options are available. Okay, that is one. Then cameras, each camera you can go up to 32 megapixel. Okay, not total, each camera. So if you have 32 cameras, each camera there is, if you are within this bandwidth, then you can go up to 32 megapixel per camera. Basically, it supports more than 4K. Maybe you have camera 16 megapixel, 30 megapixel. So you can add those camera. Okay, that is one. All right. So this is X. Then X is where you have dual power supply. You see here D. D means dual power supply. Um, Yeah, here it is, dual SMPS for, for this model. The one with the letter D supports dual power supply. Okay, then you will find in some of the, uh, all, all the latest models, you will find this mentioned, AI search. Okay, uh, so we still have models which are quite old, like three or four years old. They don't have AI search because that time AI was not there. Uh, but in the last year onwards, we have updated many models and uh, released many models, more than 30, 40 NBR models. So those ones, they have AI search. AI search means you can, if you have AI camera, you can search for it. You can search by gender, you can search by shirt color, pant color, whether carrying a bag, uh, you can search for vehicle, car, bus, uh, color of the car, two colors you can choose. So AI search, but in order to do AI search, you should have AI camera. What is AI camera? Any camera that is, uh, where is the, for example, PNOA, So these are AI cameras. If you use AI camera, then you can search for all this data. Okay, so AI search is available. What if you have an NVR today? Maybe let's say PRN4011. Okay, this is an old model. There's no new written on it. This guy will not have AI search. Although it's a P series, but it's a very old model considering we have released so many new ones. So this is an old model. It's very powerful at VR, but it's an older model, does not have AI search, where you can search if you have AI camera. Okay, you can still add AI camera and record, but you cannot do AI search with it. All right, so this is the older model of NVR. So this also you have to be careful if you are purchasing for a project today, uh, you have timeline, I mean, you are, maybe you finalized the project last year and you are looking, you can go ahead and explore the option to update and use the latest model, which supports AI search, because you never know, maybe later on you will add one AI camera and uh, you can get the AI function. Um, if you go with the NVR without AI, that means you have to change it later on. Okay, so that can be done. Go through the question, Max supported. Okay, I'll come to your question, Tosif, just a minute. All right, so uh, XRN6410. So there's a question, can XRN6410 support uh, more than eight terabyte? I believe that is your question. So XRN6410 B2, B2. Eight TB and uh, ten TB is also listed here. Ten TB. So yeah, it supports ten also in that case. Okay, I hope I answered. 
maybe you can download the latest one uh, device list you can find it okay then uh, let's go forward okay now how to select the uh, what how to select the NVR using a toolbox toolbox okay and go here put your mouse anywhere and click on WiseNet toolbox okay now first you can take uh, let's say you have a project with uh, Five hundred cameras, two MP, thirty-one days recording. Okay, so I will take any two megapixel camera. Preferably, you can take a dome or a bullet. Okay, take any two megapixel and uh, calculate for five hundred. 31 days go to settings currently it is recording on motion I will make it continuous okay if you want to do motion recording you can do motion for 12 hours for example you can add motion okay or you can make it all continuous okay done then at the bottom you can see h.264 I will make it h265 for better recording encoding all right so i need 285 done now i need to select the nvr if i have 500 cameras you have to as of now what did you learn you learned about l series you learned about q series and you learned about x series x series you have up to 64 channel so which is the highest available in the x series so considering what we learned 500 divided by 64 means i need 8 nvr so first how to select from the X series which if you go to NVR section there are so many 64 channel options how to choose right uh, that's why there was one trick about D D means dual power supply if you don't want dual you can go with the standard then B2 B2 means a lesser number of hard disk B4 means 4 times 4 16 hard disk okay now uh, when you did the storage when you did the storage you required around 300 terabyte okay but you still need eight NVRs so each NVR it's not 300 total a for eight NVR altogether you need 300 all right so you do need a NVR which has a lot of hard disk which you will not use it has 16 hard disk slot but you will not use all 16 so better to go with a lower number of hard disk support okay all right then with the lower is b2 so i can take this and there is one more b2 here i can take that also all right uh, p series you can skip for now and uh, xrn okay we can take this one as an option okay this one these are old models i will take anyway just to give you a comparison click on this compare okay 400 mbps 400 mbps it supports eight hard disk all of them supports eight hard disk so far okay the first one support raid 5 and raid 6 if you don't want raid 5 go with the second one so keep scrolling down everything else looks fine so you can actually you can take one or two but the first uh, i mean the second or third the last one is an older generation model uh, so I will go with the new generation okay 6410 P2 how do I know it is older generation uh, if you go here in the catalog XRN 3010 actually it has been uh, yeah it's been marked okay you see here new this one does not have new that is one second AI search you will not find AI search you will find here okay another way to quickly know is we are now migrating all the model numbers to 3210 
6410 which means 32 channel 64 channel previously we used 30 30 40 20 these are all old models okay they don't represent number of channel they are representing bandwidth like 200 mbps 300 mbps like that so the that is one way to know whether they are the latest nvr or the older nvr the latest nvr will have 32 64 8 you know those specific numbers okay from that also you can get an idea okay this should be the latest one all right so when i compared i didn't want raid 5 so i will go with the second one delete delete calculate go to nvr okay now look for exclamation mark you have to get rid of the exclamation mark how to get rid of the exclamation currently it says quantity not enough increase 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 till the exclamation is gone bandwidth automatically it fixed storage if you are inserting 4 tb not enough you need to increase the size if you insert 6 terabyte then storage is okay good enough each nvr that is total 8 each nvr you have to insert 6 tb hard disk 6 quantity per nvr if i make it 10 tb then each nvr i need to insert a 10 tb hard disk but only four quantity so you can get a comparison from the hard disk supplier which one will be cheaper six terabyte into um, let's say six so this means i have eight nvrs eight into uh, six terabyte i need six hard disk into six so i need 48 hard disks or I can go with 8 terabyte. 8 terabyte I need 8 into 5, 40 hard disk. Or if I use 10 terabyte, I need 8 into 4, 32 hard disk. So first one was 48, so 16 hard disk we will save. So you can check which one is most affordable and choose that size as your recommended size. Okay. Now the same project if you need raid 5 then this model is out because it didn't have raid let me add all of them okay now compare go down first one does not have raid eliminate second one third and fourth all of them have raid but the second and the third the big difference is the number of hard disk if you are recording in, if you're having a project where you're recording for 90 days then you need a lot of storage you need 800 terabyte then it makes sense then you can say all right if each nvr had more hard disk it would have been better then you can look at the third or fourth option if you're recording for seven days 31 days then you don't need a 16 hard disk slot okay so you got the idea now between the third and the second one what's the difference the third one has dual power supply. The fourth one does not have dual power supply. So there are certain IT companies, policies where you have to have dual power supply, certain regulations, certain compliance requirement, dual power supply. You can go with that. Otherwise, no need. So here, let's say I don't want a dual power supply. I go with the standard model. Calculate. Now my recording is 90 days. Check the NVR quantity, not enough. Keep increasing. This is new NVR. Okay, keep increasing. <coughs> Eight. Good enough. Uh, and uh, storage. I'll go to the highest. Just meeting the requirement with, without RAID yet. So let me see RAID five. If I create, if I have RAID five, I need more storage. So it's not enough. In that case, I need to increase by one more quantity. Got it. I need nine NVRs if I want RAID 5. Okay, if I don't need RAID, eight quantity is eight quantities enough. Sometimes it is not refreshing, so just make sure you whenever you make any changes, just click on the hard disk and select again, it will refresh quickly. Okay, then go back. If I need RAID 6, I need 960 terabyte. Okay, and uh, 10 ATB 
oh sorry i need 828 terabyte i have 160 into 8 160 into 8 i need okay i have 1280 terabyte out of which only 960 is usable rest will go for raid okay let me repeat that when you activate raid some of the hard disk will go for raid parity okay so this nvr if you put 160 terabyte usable is 120 okay uh, roughly 40 terabyte is gone for raid okay let me remove this Okay, let's take uh, let's just, just for example sake okay let's okay don't worry about the days now okay now 10 terabyte 16 slots 160 TB got it if I activate rate 5 only 140 TB will be available if I activate rate 6 only 120 TB will be available rest is gone for rate all right so this is how rate works now and uh, yeah okay let me do the opposite if i'm recording for one day i need only nine terabyte and uh, let's say i have only one camera one day i'm recording one nvr no rate if i don't have rate maybe it's okay but if i create rate i need minimum six hard disk maybe i can increase the size still minimum i need six hard disk in this model so you got uh, the idea that when you activate rate you need a minimum number of hard disk per nvr it doesn't matter if you need only one terabyte same way when you activate rate you will also lose some amount of storage even if i put 10 into 6 60 terabyte some amount of hard disk is gone for rate so only 50 will be usable okay so this is expected it's not a surprise it's an expected thing the calculator now makes it easy for you to see everything what's going on when you activate rate okay let's go back and uh, okay now if you want a project with failover let's say I have 100 cameras I need failover in this case how do you select uh, just first select how many cameras you need how many NVRs you need all that is done after that you add one more NVR for failover purpose okay you need n plus 1 failover right so 2 plus 1 n is 2 if you need 8 NVR 8 plus 1 if you have 20 NVRs try to split it uh, every 10 so you need eight, 10, uh, 20 means every 10 1 so you need 20 plus 2 2 failover so this is how you design when you have a failover requirement and one condition is NVR should be the same model if you have a 64 channel NVR you have to have failover to a 64 channel you cannot have 32 channel as a failover okay so all the NVR in the failover group should be exactly the same model number to the dot should be the same model okay now the last one is when to choose a p series nvr all right now you will see here prp this is not nvr this is a server actually p p means um, if you go to number model numbering we are focusing today only on letter n we are not focusing on letter p PC based, Windows based recording systems, server based, VMS level. Today we are focusing only on letter N. So we have other higher channels. We can expand this also with two, three hundred and so on. But that's not what we are training on today. Today we are tra training on NVR, a Linux based NVR, how to choose a Linux based NVR. Okay, so you are, if you, for the quiz, you should limit the model numbers below 64 channel and it should have letter n that is nvr okay now how to choose a p series nvr why would you need a p series nvr okay there are two reasons this is the reason here okay 
okay let's uh, focus on the don't focus on the legacy just remove this let's focus on the new okay all right if you need these two highlighted functions these bold functions if you want them ai function for a non ai camera if you want to convert a normal camera to an ai camera you need a p series nvr if you want face recognition to search for a certain you want to upload a face and search for all the faces in the scene then we have a separate model for that under p series we have a separate model for face recognition so you have to choose that in here so these are not a standard requirement artificial intelligence converting a non ai camera to an ai camera and uh, using face recognition for face recognition you have to use ai but if you want to upload a person's face and search for the face in the scene then you can go with the p series nvr all right so here we go and if you go to prn keep going down you will find a nice flyer here called ai nvr this is talking about p series nvr where you can use any non ai camera non ai p series or x series and convert it to get uh, shirt color pan color whether the person is male female whether he is a person or not whether it's a car or a human being you can get all this ai data from the scene with a non ai camera using a p series ai nvr okay so that can be done even number plate it can try to pick it up just convert the text to data not a, we have a npr camera solutions coming up that is different but this is just converting the text data to um uh what do you call alpha numeric values and it supports english okay so those are the two things which you can keep in mind and uh, here we go so let's i can show you on the nbr okay so now i'm on a p series nbr when you go to setup you will find these two options event ai engine this particular nbr has two processor inside one a normal for processing for nbr and then it has a ai chip ai chip for converting a non ai camera to a ai camera so here i have added all the standard cameras you can say start doing object detection you can enable that okay so that can be done and then once you do this um, there is one more catch uh, or a note you have to keep in mind even though it is 64 channel you can only convert 32 cameras half of them even though it is 64 camera you can con convert half the camera to ai the remaining half can be a camera with ai itself or a normal camera that's okay you can still connect 64 but if the ai chip has a capability to convert half the camera list to ai so the ai i mean you as you add and click use you will see the processor load getting increased for the ai chip so roughly 32 cameras you can add if you buy a 32 channel ai and vr 6 16 cameras you can convert even though they are non ai so here you go object detection you can say detect person vehicle license plate and all that then when you do okay i think it if i applied okay apply it now you can go do ai search search for all the data and then you can play back this video so when it saw a person with a black color pant and so on so this is ai search done by the nvr on a non ai camera got it so this is that same way you can do vehicle lp search again the reason why we are not really talking about this is because we will be launching our own npr camera 
called road ai you would have seen advertisements we will have a webinar on that uh, by end of the year we will also support arabic number plates so till then we are just waiting because most of the countries where in middle east they need arabic number plate so once we also release arabic number plate we will have a webinar on it where the camera will pick up car car type car brand uh, number plate and uh, you can have blacklist whitelist all that feature on the camera itself you can add it to the nvr for recording and so on so that will be separately available this one um, if you if you want to consider this you can consider this as an ocr engine object character recognition basically from the image it looks at any text data on it will just convert it as a as a text i mean if it looks at a number plate with some text details it will convert it to text okay so it's a basic version of a number plate but we strongly recommend that you use the number plate cameras uh, which we have right um, you can get in touch with our team we call we have those models in p series we will also have an x series we all we will also be launching one newer high speed anpr camera by uh, hopefully end of the year or early next year with a different shutter settings higher frame rate and so on something you see in radar so we will also have something like that so uh, this is uh, the initial point this is the first one which we have um, built in on the camera anpr that is also available you can use that for number plate okay However, uh, P series NVR, why would you need it if you want to convert a non AI camera to AI? That is one of the main reasons why customers would be required to buy a P series NVR. Okay. Then, uh, lastly, once you have all the NVRs in place, you can use our VMS. Our VMS is free to use without any paid license. You can use our VMS. You can have a PC, install this VMS, and add all the NVRs to it and do central monitoring. You have five NVRs. How do you monitor them centrally? How do you see them together in one screen? You can use a SSM VMS. Okay, let's quickly go through them and conclude. Okay, this one is fine. So let's go to the slide. Okay, so some of you might be familiar with this slide. You have a project with one, two, three, four, five, six NVRs, and you have only three monitors. How do you see them together? You have cameras, some ca entrance cameras are in NVR1, some entrance cameras are in NVR2. How do you see them in one monitor? All right, today you have to connect separately to each monitor, but how do you see them together in one PC, one machine? In that case, we have a VMS solution called SSM VMS. You can connect all the NVRs to SSM and the client can get all the data, live view, playback together from SSM. It failover is also supported. Maybe uh, if one NVR fails to, if one NVR fails, I mean, if the SSM PC fails, the client cannot get all the live view. So in that case, you can have a failover SSM. Then all the NVRs will get transferred here. The client will be still getting live video playback and so on. Okay. So let me just quickly check if the system is coming up. So I'm now going to open SSM and uh, just do a small demonstration to show how to connect all the NVRs. And uh, okay, while it loads, uh, how many NVRs you can connect? 
and how many uh, servers you need per NVR and so on. So let's uh, see in the next slide. Each, each of the central VMS, each of them can control up to 3000, not NVR, 3000 channels. Okay, and this is not requiring paid license. There's no need to pay for this license. It is free to use. Okay, so there is videos online how to activate that free license and so on. Uh, we or if you attend configuration training, I will be explaining that. But as a pre-sales engineer, today we are talking pre-sales. As a cost, you have to buy a PC alone with Windows, but you don't have to pay for any camera license or NVR license, not required, if you use SSM VMS. So here, uh, here I have SSM VMS and uh, camera and NVR you can connect 3000 channel. So if you have 64 channel, 3000 divided by 64, around 46 NVRs you can connect. Okay. And uh, what if you have 6000? You can group multiple servers. You can buy one more server or a PC, install, add another 3000 and group it. So you can have central monitoring for 6,000. That can be done. So we can group it. Again, no license required. How many clients you can connect for each server? You can have 20 PCs connected to each server, up to 20 clients. Each client, you can have four monitors. And uh, core or client, doesn't matter. You have minimum spec is i7. This you don't have to memorize now. I will be sending the slide. Um, but see, if you have a project with 500 cameras, eight NVRs, okay. If you have a project with 500 cameras, eight NVRs, 64 channel, and your control room, you have maybe two PCs with four monitors each. Okay, so eight monitors you have, two PCs, four monitors. All right. Because you have eight NVR, you need eight PC or eight monitor, sorry, not PC, eight monitor, but you have only two PCs and uh, let's say three monitors each. Let's make it, or three monitors each. This is your condition. How will you see them together? Okay, uh, let me see if this is online. This one is okay. All right, so right now, this is SSM. I have opened it and I have logged in SSM. Okay, already logged in. And the license is free. Okay, if you go to licensing, there is something called zero zero free license. You can download it online. There is a YouTube video how to do it. You can activate this. Each of this license you need for each server. So I have one server. If I have two, I need two. Okay, not for each NVR per server per server. I can, I have your add button. I can add all the NVR in my project. So here I'm going to add all the NVRs. Okay, so I add all the NVR. Register, each NVR will now get added. We will go back to the specs, but uh, before that, let's have a look at how this SSM VMS works. We will cover more in detail in VMS session, but this is just for those who are happy with only NVR and have a project with more than one NVR, then you can consider to install a VMS in that site. Because it's free to use, why not, right? You can use SSM VMS, but what is your cost? You have to buy one PC and install the VMS. Okay, done. So this is on a different IP, so it didn't register. That's fine. So now I added NVR. This one has three channel. This one has two channel. This one has one camera. This one has three cameras. Some of them IP chains. So this one has six cameras and so on. So what was said and done, there are so many cameras. Okay, total this many cameras. All right. Now here, how many licenses used? Zero. It does not consume any license. 
there is 16 channel this is not for nvr this is for camera this is not for nvr <coughs> excuse me so it doesn't matter you can keep adding as many nvr as you want the vms can be used at no cost if i add a camera instead of adding a nvr if i add a camera then it will consume the license so i added one camera now uh, okay this camera has got two channels so it consumed two licenses okay but if you're adding nvr nvr is not going to take any license the free license comes with 16 channel for projects where i mean let's say i'm doing a demo i don't have an nvr i can directly record on the pc okay so recording on the pc 16 cameras so don't get confused on that directly focus on the nvr part if you have nvr you don't need to buy any extra license and what benefit do you get here you can group them together so in my monitoring window in one screen i can uh, view cameras from nvr1 i can view some cameras from nvr2 i can see them together i don't have to have separate monitors for each nvr you got that then i can group the nvr together i can i can say ground floor site one i can add multiple cameras first floor i can see them together i can create maps i can create mapping layout and so on so there are many benefits of ssm vms which we will see in session three and uh, generally speaking if you have a project and you want to do central monitoring of multiple nvrs i would recommend using ssm uh, ssm is more advanced compared to smart viewer because you can uh, also you can link you know you can link alarm for example i need i have an event from nvr camera motion detected i can send an email i can do a pop-up or i can say uh, show me another camera let's see this camera i can do a pop-up instant pop-up and so on even dvr you can add by the way so this is the benefit and uh, even you can trigger if nvr disconnected you can send an email so you can manage your entire project using ssm vms uh, you know in uh, think of it like an enterprise level you can do that okay and when you are viewing uh, it will automatically adjust the resolution so you don't need you don't you will not see you know lagging and other things because the ssm vms when you see cameras in full resolution i mean low resolution it will automatically adjust the resolution depending on the number of cameras you're seeing okay so 640 by 480 and so on and uh, when you go to full resolution it will switch to full hd so you can adjust that and that how do you adjust you can check here profile live high sorry live high live low live high means full resolution view live low means half resolution so um, we will see that later on in session three but uh, in general we recommend that you use ssm vms if you have multiple NVRs and you want to see them centrally. And the requirement is very simple, i7, 16 GB RAM. And uh, if you have two monitors, two GB graphics card. If you have four monitors, four GB graphics card. Every two monitors add two GB graphics. Maximum four monitors. If you have six monitor, make two PCs, three monitor each or four monitor and two monitor each. Okay. And for those projects where you have only 100 cameras you don't need to buy separate core server and client you can make both in one so for example in my demo system i have very few cameras right so i installed the server in the same pc this is the service of the server system manager and the client also in the same pc so if you have 100 cameras 128 cameras you can install both of them in the same PC. And how, what is the proof? SSM server will work even in Windows 10. SSM client also works in Windows 10. So you can buy a Windows 10 PC. Maybe you have two NVRs, each 64 channel. You can have one Windows 10 PC, 16 GB RAM, install server and client in the same PC and start monitoring centrally. You don't have to have separate PC, separate server. 
okay so for small project it's very flexible you can use it okay so uh, that's about the nvr session in order to summarize there are four series of nvr l and q for small projects small and medium projects x roughly speaking all projects will use x series nvr failover onwards you need x raid failover all that ai i mean uh, failover raid you need x series nvr x also has four channel 16 channel eight channel but higher higher hdd capability more hard disk compared to compared to q and x q and l okay p series to a simple and uh, if you have that requirement you can go any existing project you want to migrate to an ai camera project you can use p series nvr all right if you have multiple nvrs buy one most of the project is within 3000 camera right so buy one ssm pc can handle 3000 channels okay even if you use 50 50 cameras it will consider 64 channel nvr as 64 channel all right so 3000 channels okay what is the spec i7 16 gb ram if you have two pcs client pcs each client pc same i7 16 gb ram and uh, if they have two monitors 2 gb graphics card windows 10 windows 10 you can close the deal so that's it all right so and how, what is the cost for the license zero dollars okay now um, thing before we close there is a small uh, we can do a small quiz it's not a it's not an evaluation it's just an interactive quiz Let's go. Okay. 